this is Subway Story by Julia Sarconi Roach, and this is one of my favorite books to read to my son Dexter, who's a big transit fan. And it's a true story about Jesse, the subway car. When Jesse was born in St. Louis, Missouri, she weighed 75,122 pounds and was 51 and a half feet long. She had a loud horn, four big fans, four large windows, bright lights for seeing, sturdy seats for sitting, and a gleaming coat of paint. She was a beautiful, shiny, new subway car. Jessie arrived in her new home in New York City and got to work right away. She, she was, was strong, strong and fast. fast. People, People relied on her, on her to get to their jobs or to school or to, school or to, or to see, see their, their friends and family. family. Jessie traveled, traveled all over the, the big, bustling city. When, when the World's, World's Fair, Fair began, began Jessie had, had the special job of carrying visitors to the, to the fairgrounds. fairgrounds. Sometimes, Sometimes Jessie helped, helped carry unusual things. things. And, and she, she made sure, sure to go slower around the curve so everyone and everything arrived safe. Sometimes musicians practiced on board and Jesse was happy to provide some rumbles and clickety clacks for their songs. Even the occasional pigeon came along for a ride. Probably didn't pay the fare though. No matter who or what was on board, Jesse's favorite part of her route was the curve of the track right before her tunnel ducked under the river. She would speed up for the curve and then zip around with a screech of sparks shooting off her wheels. And even deep down under the river, Jessie could still hear the echoing boom of the tugboats far up above her. If she passed another train, she'd always give a friendly wink with the twinkle of her headlight. Over the years, Jessie saw the city change, and she had some changes of her own. Her parts got fixed when they broke down, and she even got to change colors. They used to have a real problem with graffiti on the trains in New York. But when Jessie got older, a new coat of paint wouldn't hide the cracks in her seats and the scratches and scuffs on her windows and floors. Still, she kept working as best she could through the springs and summers, falls and winters. Another spring came and Jessie noticed more new shiny silver trains running on the tracks. By summer, Jessie's fans were just not strong enough to keep her passengers cool, so newer air-conditioned trains took over her route during the summer months. Jessie missed the people and the activity. She was always glad when fall came and she could go back to work. Then one year the air turned frosty and the leaves changed color, but nobody came to put Jessie back on her route. She sat in a yard with the other older trains. She thought about the people she had carried. Did they notice that she was gone? One day, workers came and moved Jessie inside. When they began removing her fans, Jessie was excited. Finally, I'm getting fixed, she thought. As they pulled out her seats and windows, Jessie began to feel much lighter. But then she felt someone unbolting her doors. Wait, she thought, my doors aren't broken, I need them. Instead of fixing her, the people were taking Jessie apart. Off came her lights, her signs, her brakes, and her horn, too. And then they washed Jessie over and over again and left her with a group of other cleaned-up subway cars. The cars were loaded onto a barge in the river, and a tugboat pulled the barge out of the city harbor. As the waves got bigger, Jessie felt the breeze whistle through her empty windows. Curious fish peered up at them as the barge moved into the open ocean. Will I ever get to see my city again? Jessie nervously thought. After traveling for hours, the barge came to a stop. The subway cars could see nothing but water. Everything was quiet. Suddenly, the crane in the middle of the barge began to move. It shoved the car next to Jessie to the edge of the, the, edge of the barge. Splash! The car went over and disappeared beneath the waves. Is that what will happen to me? Jessie wondered. And then she felt the crane beneath her pushing her towards the edge. Then whoosh, Jessie plunged into the salty ocean. Water thundered into every part of Jessie and it got darker and darker and she sank down, down, down. Thump, she hit the ocean floor. A huge cloud of sand and silt churned up around her and at first Jessie couldn't see anything. 
Then, out of the dimness, came a little silver fish. In and out of Jessie's windows and doors he swam, and soon there were curious little fish swirling around her. In the darkness, Jessie felt a little like she was back in the subway tunnels she knew so well. Over the next few days, more fish decided to move in and live with Jessie. In the following weeks, shellfish settled inside and plants began to grow all over her. The then bigger fish came from the deeper parts of the ocean to feed on the smaller fish. Sometimes a dolphin or a turtle would stop by to visit. Now Jessie lives on the ocean floor. Tiny creatures called coral cling to the same poles that people held onto when Jessie lived and worked above ground. Hundreds of fish dart through the doors that people once used. Jessie was once an important part of the city where she lived. And now, a whole city lives inside her. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's a true story. They actually did this with retired subway cars in New York City. So do any of you recognize this map on my shirt? Yeah. 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 What, do what do you think, think it, it is? is? LRT stations. So we only have from here to here and a little bit of this, and we're starting to build this, but wouldn't it be cool if by the time you guys were going to university or maybe to Nate, that you could ride the entire LRT system anywhere in the city? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so too. That's what we're working on, trying to do for you at City Hall here. So, but we could use your support. Can you guys help us out with that? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm.